Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Today, I'm here to talk about METAR remarks, including the extremely obscure stuff. And actually, I'm not going to go over the remarks that you should probably know or could easily look up. Instead, we're going to focus on obscure stuff. Before we get into that, the video today is sponsored by Listener.io, which is a online safe space for seeking counseling. Um, you don't even have to have your camera turned on if you don't want to. And they have a discount code that they've given to me, which is in the video description. So please be sure to check it out, especially for pilots, because it is a safe space for online counseling. Now, I had a dispatcher class I recently did, and there are a bunch of number remarks at the end of the METAR, and we actually got to looking in this more deeply, and I honestly did not know what the most of the remarks were, but it is actually really good for you to have information about that in your head for when you do your knowledge test or when you do a oral and practical test. Now, I have also created a PDF file that I linked to in the video description. It's on my website, so you can check that out and look at that and follow along because I'm going to go through some of the really obscure stuff at the end of the METAR that you may or may not know. First one I pulled to look at is Miami. And it's from Miami International Airport. And again, I'm not going to talk about all this stuff up here, which is fascinating. You can have fun decoding that on your own. What I am going to talk about are these groups at the end. So let's start with the six group. The six group tells us how much precipitation in liquid form has fallen in the previous six hour period. It is reported at the 1200 Zulu TAF. Now you might say, well, wait, Laura, this says 11.53, it does, but it comes out like seven minutes before the hour. And so this is officially the 1200 Zulu TAF. All right, so back to the six code and the numbers that follow. If you have six and just a bunch of zeros, that means that just a trace of precipitation fell in the last six hour period, but they don't have a way to measure it because it wasn't enough to be measurable. Okay, all right, the next group, seven group. This is the 24 hour liquid precipitation in tenths of, um, in tenths of an inch. I'm sorry, in hundredths of an inch. Okay. So that means that this one received in Miami in the last 24 hours, they received 0.56 inches of rain. And this is always shown again at the 1200 Z observation. Okay. Uh, the next group, honestly, if you're a pilot or a dispatcher or a student, you should already know how to read this, but this is the temperature group. So this is this current hour observation, but in including the tenths of a degree. So all you do to read it is add a little dot at the end of each group. The first group right here, that's my temperature. The second four numbers, that's my dew point. So to decode this one, it's 27.8 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 25.0 degrees Celsius. Now my quick tip for that is just find the corresponding temperature and dew point in the main beginning part of your METAR. And so just look at those and match them up and it helps you figure it out. All right, let's move on to more obscurity. The one group that we see right here that is reported at the um, 0, the 6, 12, and 1800 TAF, which is just like the 6 group, okay? Those are at the 0, the 6, 12, and 18 TAF, or sorry, METAR, I keep saying TAF, METAR. All right, this one group tells me the highest temperature in the previous six hour period. So the highest temperature in the previous six hour period, I'll write that on there, was 29.4 degrees Celsius. And interestingly, correspondingly, the two group is the lowest temperature that was recorded in the previous six hour group. So in the previous six hours, the low was 26.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, again, this is reported at 0, 6, 12, and 1800. So you don't see it in all of our METARs. All right, and then this last five group here, this one is really a bear. 
so I recommend again getting my cheat sheet, download this this little baby off my website. But the five tells me that it's a pressure tendency. Okay, it's a pressure tendency in the last three hours. This first number, the number one, tells what the pressure has actually been doing. And I have a decoding table, and again, I, I, I just don't memorize these, so I'm going to decode it by looking at my table. It was increasing and then steady, or increasing, then increasing more slowly. And then the last digits here are how many millibars that the pressure changed. So we add a dot right there, so the pressure changed by 1.2 millibars and it rose from the preceding three hours. Okay, dollar sign, you guys should already know this if you know about METARs, but that means the system needs maintenance of some type. I don't know what, it needs something. All right, let's look at another one of good remarks. Okay, this one I just thought was cool, so I put it up here because we have a little bit of an extra thing going on here. We have a P group, and that is the hourly liquid precipitation in hundredths of an inch of rain that fell that hour. So how I would read this one would be that 1.09 inches of rain fell in that hour. Okay, so this actually tells me up to the hundredths of an inch of how much liquid precipitation fell in that past hour. We already talked about how to read the temperature and what the dollar sign means. All right, one last fun thing. T-S-D-S-I-P-T-D, thunderstorm dissipated. So there was a thunderstorm, but it's done now. Let's look at this group right here, the four group. Okay, this is an interesting group. This is the recorded high and low temperature in the past 24 hours. Okay, and when they put this on a METAR, they put it on at midnight local time. Okay, so I will try to write the word midnight. There we go. Midnight local time is basically 0600Z at DFW with the current time zone, which right now it's daylight savings time is going on. So how do I read this? It's kind of like this, actually it's kind of like this T group here, all right? So the high temperature was 35.0 and the low temperature was 24.4 degrees Celsius over the previous 24 hour period. Cool. So fun fact, probably didn't know that one because I didn't either until I looked it up. All right, now I've got a couple that I pulled out of Alaska mainly because I want to talk about what if a temperature or a dew point is negative. How do they show that? Okay, um, we've talked about this group, meaning that it's the precipitation liquid. If it's all zeros, it's a trace of precipitation fell, but they couldn't measure how much it was. Again, we talked about the six group, that's the six hour liquid precipitation, how much fell um, in the preceding six hours, but it's all zeros, so it's a trace. Okay. Now, let's talk about this temperature dew point group. So I'm gonna divide it in half again, like before. Okay, so we still have the temperature group at the first part, but now notice the first digit is one. Well, that's kind of weird. So what that one tells me is it is negative 2.2 degrees Celsius. That's the current temperature. And the current dew point is also has that one right there. So that means it's negative 2.2 eight degrees Celsius for my dew point. Once again, I like to just take and refer back to the main body of the METAR and you can see, ah, the dew point is negative three, temperature is negative two, they do round that. So I like this group of the temperature and dew point because I can see that actually between the temp and the dew point is only 0 0.6 degrees. If I only read this part of my METAR, I would think it was one degree, okay. So again, fun fact um, that you can look at. Same for how to decode these. All right, so our highest temperature in the previous six hour period was negative 1.1 degrees C. And the lowest temperature, the preceding six hour period, again, we see that one right there, that makes it negative 2.2 degrees C. Okay, cool. 
You already looked at this. I told you how to decode this with the pressure tendency. The eight is steady or increasing, then decreasing. And apparently the pressure is pretty steady because it's actually only changed by 0 0.1 millibar in the preceding six hours. Okay. Then you have this. There's a whole list if you look at Aviation Weather Services, the um, handbook the FAA provides. With freezing rain, no. There's a whole bunch of area sensors that can be broken on a system. So this one apparently cannot currently report freezing rain. It's not operating. All right, last one that I just wanted to run over because we've talked about how to do the temp group. But here is our four group again. Notice this is at midnight in Alaska. So midnight local time again is when they list the maximum and minimum temperature in this four group for the previous 24 hours. OK, so in this group, you will notice my temperature apparently hit a maximum of 1.1 degrees C sometime in the previous 24 hours. But my dew point, or I'm sorry, but my low temperature was a negative 2.2 degrees C in the previous 24 hours. So that's how you read that four group if there turns out to be a negative in the minimum or in the maximum. It could be both minimum and maximum could have a negative depending on time of year, of course. But that is your 24 hour group. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, walking through all the really obscure remarks of all the numbers. Please check out this sheet downloaded on my website. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more aviation content and have an awesome day.